We have finally heard some news about the continuation of Blue Lock. As one of the most successful mangas in recent months, it was only to be expected that there would be a sequel, especially because the anime has also taken off abnormally. But not only that, many of you probably know that we will soon be getting a sequel movie to Nagi. This will be released on April 19th, so you can see from that alone what a sick piece of shit it is. A whole movie about the backstory of the titular protagonist, about the main character who is not actually the main character. I think you get the message. It just shows how sick these dimensions are when a whole movie is made about the backstory of a character who isn't even the main character. But anyway, today is about what you might want to know before watching the upcoming second season of Blue Lock. It's not reprehensible because the people who only watch the anime, well, the last episode came out on March 26, 2023, and it's been a while. Depending on when you watch this video, season two probably isn't even out yet, and it might take a while, but it won't hurt. So here's a quick recap of the first season. The main character, Isagi Yoichi, had the dream to become the best striker in the whole world. So he wants to be the Japanese Cristiano Ronaldo. He had already had a good opportunity in his school soccer team where he could have scored a goal to make it big. However, Isagi is, or rather was, a bit of a pussy, which is why he passed the ball to another player shortly before the goal, alone against the goalkeeper, who then shot it against the post. This was followed by a counter-attack, and the rest is history, Isagi had lost the game. This pissed him off so much that he started crying like a little pussy in front of some kids. It was an absolute low point in his career, and he almost wanted to give up on his dream, until he received a chance invitation from a project called Blue Lock. It flashed him, and he was so convinced that it was his last chance to become a relevant Ronaldo clone, especially because of his soccer game with his team where he had received PTSD for the whole season. So he accepted and went into this project. This is also a project over several weeks, so either it was during the summer vacation, or I have no idea how they managed to convince the parents to let them go to a kind of boot camp for soccer players in the mountains during school time, which they couldn't even visit or call during because the players had to hand in their cell phones. Very legit in any case. Isagi was there now, and the big thing was that it wasn't just other soccer players from other schools, it was all strikers. So they were all players who thought, I am the next Ronaldo. So without hesitation, there were the colleagues in a room, 12 people from different teams. And without them being able to introduce themselves, it started straight away. You had to ruin another guy's life. The last guy who had the ball was kicked out of the project and was never allowed to play for the Japanese soccer team. And here comes a point that I absolutely cannot understand. Don't get me wrong, playing for the national team is certainly really nice, but honestly, would it ruin your life? Imagine you make it to a first division team, or even better, Real Madrid. You earn millions and get every supercar, every model and every watch you want. Would you still be itching to play for your national team? I doubt it. In any case, the blonde guy called Kira has been eliminated. He will become very, very important in the manga, so I won't spoil anything here. Joking aside, guys, this guy is as relevant as Ronald Gerald Wayne, who sold his 10% share of Apple with a few hundred dollars. He wasn't mentioned once after that until today, but I'm absolutely sure he'll come back somehow. They didn't build up a relatively cool character just to shoot him away, although maybe they did. So the true 11 were chosen, given the name Team Z, and they started to become like brothers and love each other on a Nohomo basis, like players at a LAN party back then. Honorable mentions are Gagamaru, Raichi, Kunigami, Bachira, and Chigiri, who become a major part of the series. I won't mention the monk because everyone knows he's the goat, even if you haven't watched the series. They definitely got to know each other, lived together, and made tactics about the upcoming games they have to play. Oh yes, I didn't even mention it. Besides their team, there are 24 other teams that also have 11 people. These teams were divided into different groups and had to play against each other, with only the top two teams in each group progressing and one player from the other team scoring the most goals. This went on until Isagi and the other clowns had just about won. So they moved on to the next selection, where there were other challenges again. We were only able to see Isagi's point of view and Isagi was able to come out on top. In the next selection, the friends had to divide themselves into groups of three and play against other groups of three. Very innovative in any case. There they met the snob Itoshi Rin, who had longer eyelashes than Dwayne The Rock Johnson's hair. But Itoshi Rin wasn't just an ordinary snob, because he was Sayatoshi's little brother, an even bigger snob who had played for Real Madrid. This pair of brothers had a relationship like Itachi and Sasuke, exactly the same. Say, as Itachi was the quiet one and the cool one in the shadows, the one with the shadow powers that everyone liked, and Rin as Sasuke, the emo who wanted to surpass him. So Isagi had chosen his team of three 
and wanted to play directly against Sasuke's team, AI meant Rin. Even if it's about being the best in this project, I think that's absolutely stupid. Because you have to know, Rin is the best in the whole project and instead of waiting for another fodder team, he wants to attack the strongest one directly. Isagi is a very smart person. The result was definitely to be expected, even if it was a bit close. Izagi and his team, which by the way consists of his best friends, Bachira and Nagi, lost. And as a punishment, Bachira had to switch sides. Because when someone beats a team in this challenge, the winning team has to pick a guy from the other team, and he goes over to them. So Isagi and Nagi were down to just the two of them. And Isagi was shitting his pants, as it seemed that his dream was about to be shattered once again but there was still a chance. Nagi and Isagi next battled Baru and Naru higher. The latter was in the original Team Z at the start, who didn't really stand out, which makes him fodder so it was just a 2 vs one Baru was smoked by Isagi and they took it straight away which is why fodder higher was then completely knocked out. The next fight was against Kunigami, Femboy Chigiri and Nagi's friend Reo. It was a pretty cool 3 vs 3 and Isagi won as usual. They took Chigir and then fought Rin's team again, because Isagi apparently loves to fight stronger ones and get destroyed. The result, you know it, Isagi got his ass kicked again. But luckily for him, this time he was chosen to join the four others in the final challenge, while Nagi, Baru and Chigiri had to go back. There they fought against the absolute elite, such as Mbappe on Wish, Yone from Valorant, or the Rainbow Messi. These world-class players were only there because they were offered an extra 100,000, and that was just to beat up some 16-year-old Japanese. Very strong thinking. It was also quite funny to watch as they tried to speak English with the Japanese dubbing voices. But anyway, they fought, and the result was only logical because they got the beating of their lives there. Not literally, but they took a different kind of beating. But it was only a test match, so it wasn't all that bad. We had now reached the end of the season, and we saw all the other teams that had also made it to the final challenge. We saw most of Team Z there, as well as Baru and Nagi, but unfortunately one of them got it. Ichigo, who together with Reo had lost to Doflamingo's son Shidu, and Shido is a different kind of fierce character, who first made fun of Kunigami and then almost kicked Isagi in the face. But the question was, where is Kunigami? Since Reo was chosen, Kunigami was eliminated and shown the door until he suddenly discovered another door, namely the one to the wild card. You'll find out what this is all about in season two. But let me tell you one thing, Shidu took Kunigami's pants off properly, and you won't recognize him anymore. Not only did he take off his pants, but he also forced him to pick up the soap. No joking aside, but it was definitely very violent. Just before the first season ends, we learn that Blue Lock's next and absolutely final challenge will be to fight the U-20s of Japan. Not only will they replace the entire U-20 of Japan if they win, but we also see the fight between Itachi and Sasuke. Sai versus Rin. And that was actually a relatively short recap of the first season. Are you already looking forward to season two? Feel free to write it in the comments. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you liked it, and we'll see you next time.